Ten years ago, Haiti was ravaged by a 7.3 magnitude earthquake. Catastrophic destruction left over 1.5 million people homeless. Over 220,000 people were killed. More than 300,000 injured. There were bodies everywhere. There were piles of bodies in the streets. You could see in the rubble people. That's Global National's Mike Drolet, who was on the ground reporting on the devastation in Haiti soon after the earthquake. It was different than any other place that I'd been. I mean, I'd seen poverty in Afghanistan. I'd seen a need at, after Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans where people had nothing left. Um, I'd been to school shootings in the U.S. where people were devastated at the, at the loss of life and the humanity. But people down there were dumbfounded. These are amongst the poorest people in the world. They had nothing to begin with. And then you took away nothing. And they were left with even less. They may have had a roof over their heads, but now they don't even have that. They were surviving on $2 a day. Now they're scrambling to find anything. One of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere, left in ruins. And a decade later, many are still haunted by the tragedy. For me, this journey is a journey that is still capable of existing since the world. Jean-Louis V was in 55 seconds. In the weeks following the earthquake, there was hope that Haiti could rebuild. An outpouring of support came from around the world in the form of volunteers, rescue and medical teams, celebrities, and donations. Millions and millions of dollars. The most watched telethon in history called Hope for Haiti Now raised 58 million US dollars within 24 hours. They started hearing about all this money being donated, how they, the world had come to their aid. And people were like hopeful. They were like, you know what? Maybe finally somebody's gonna help us. Maybe finally somebody is going to um, give us that, that hand up that we so badly needed. But that didn't happen because much of the funds never reached Haitian hands. Three billion U.S. dollars was donated to U.N. agencies and NGOs by private donors. And over the last 10 years, more than 13 billion dollars was contributed. But of that 13 billion, it's estimated only 48 percent made it to Haiti. A lot of the money went to organizations that were not actually in Haiti. So when that happens, it's like a plane that lands in six or seven places before reaching its final destination. And each layover, uh, a slice gets taken off, and that is standard overhead. And overhead's not necessarily bad, but it's bad if it's taken six times. And so after years, what was left maybe reached Haiti, but it took a long time. On top of everything else, a cholera outbreak swept the country months after the earthquake, brought in by United Nations peacekeepers. The epidemic killed thousands. Many Haitians were just trying to get out of the country. Canada opened its arms to thousands of refugees, giving immigration priority to those affected, including Gael Chancy, who was 12 years old at the time. It was decided that I was leaving for Canada, that I was coming to Montreal. What happened was um, a bit of a hard truth for me because um, I got separated from my parents because my dad stayed and I understood the situation, but it was really hard because I feel like I didn't really have a choice. Once he settled in Montreal, he felt what is often described as survivor's guilt and looked for different ways to give back. Today, he's finishing up a bachelor's degree in geopolitics and is a youth worker at a Haitian community center. One of the things that I'm really proud that I've achieved uh, 10 years after is that I found a uh, way to help Haiti from here, and I help the Haitians that got here in the same way that I got here 10 years ago. And also, I, I'm looking forward and I'm thinking of, well, you know, there's nothing stopping me from going back 
as long as I make sure that what I do when I go back is making a difference. A sentiment felt by many throughout this past decade. The pictures I've seen from Haiti, there really not much appears to have changed. And that's, it's sad because there was such hope, but pessimists said, you know what, we'll see. We'll see whether or not anything changes. The quake may have destroyed the National Cathedral, but amidst all of this destruction, the Haitians still showed up to sing. They gathered in a corner behind the cathedral, close enough to still feel a part of the historic building, but far enough away that they won't be hurt should one of the massive walls fall down.